hello and welcome to the channel I hope you're having a good year and catching lots of fish just want to take a minute and say thanks for watching the videos and if you're a subscriber thank you I really appreciate it you might have noticed I haven't been posting lately and just in case anybody was wondering about that my transmission died around the first of the year so there was a period where I had no transportation at the time I had around 12 subscribers and I didn't really want to do a product review, so I started working on this video about the sunfish family. I thought it would be a really good resource for people that watch the videos. And it'd be more of a benefit than some random product review. Anyway, since I didn't have any transportation, it was still winter back then, I thought this is the perfect time to do it. Well, this sunfish project took way longer than expected, but it's finally done and the regular fishing videos will resume this week. I just wanted to give a quick channel update and thank everyone for their patience and for watching the videos. In this video, we're going to talk about the sunfish family, but first let me start by saying I'm not a biologist, but I did learn a long time ago that having a more complete understanding of the natural world not only made me a better angler, it allows me to make better use of my time outdoors, I really think this info can benefit all kinds of people in different ways, and that's one of the reasons I started this channel. Now I know some of my subscribers are very knowledgeable anglers, but we're going to start with the basics before moving to more advanced next level stuff so everyone can be on the same page. This is actually the first video in a three-part series. This one's about the sunfish family. The second video will be about natural lakes rivers and the geology of North America and the third video is going to be about black bass and black bass behavior. Sunfish or centrarchids are members of centrarchidae, the sunfish family. Sunfish are freshwater fish native only to North America and we're talking about the sunfish family because anglers target so many species in this group and it's also a very large and diverse group. It's actually the second largest endemic fish family in North America. The sunfish family contains over 40 extant or living species classified in eight genera. The first genus we're going to talk about is the type genus Centrarchus. And as you might have guessed, the sunfish family was named after this genus. By the way, for anybody that doesn't know, in taxonomy, every species is given a standard two-part name, and this is called the scientific name. The first part is the generic name, and it identifies the genus the species is in. The genus includes closely related species. The second part is the specific name, and it identifies the species within the genus. The second part is the specific name, and it identifies the species within the genus. So you'll notice all species in a genus have the same generic name, and the specific name is what identifies each species. The flyer sunfish is the only member of the genus Centrarchus. The scientific name Centrarchus macropterus is Greek, and it refers to the large anal fin of the flyer sunfish. The specific name Macropterus is also Greek and it literally means large fin. Flyer sunfish have seven to eight anal fin spines, which is more than any other sunfish. So that's one reason they're the only species in this genus. And because the flyer sunfish was one of the first centrarchids to be described by science, and all sunfish have multiple anal fin spines, they use the genus name Centrarchus to name the sunfish family. So the flyer sunfish, like all centrarchids, is a freshwater species native only to North America. They have a laterally compressed body shape, and the anal fin has multiple spines. The dorsal fins are fused or broadly connected. The males also construct and guard a nest. And what are some of the characteristics that distinguish the flyer sunfish from other centrarchids? The anal fin has seven to eight spines with 14 to 16 rays. The spiny dorsal has 11 to 13 spines, and the soft dorsal has 12 to 15 rays. Flyer sunfish also have a dark vertical stripe through the eye that continues below the eye. Now this map shows the native distribution of the flyer sunfish, but this is primarily a lowland species that seems to thrive where most fish can't. 
we're talking about swamps, oxbow lakes, sloughs, and any other kind of low gradient water body. These areas are most common below the fall line, so that's where you typically find this species. Flyer sunfish like slow moving waterways or water that doesn't move at all. So when you have those conditions below the fall line, the water is usually stained with tannins. Uh, as plants and wood decay, tannins are released and this not only stains or dyes the water, it also makes the water acidic. And if there isn't a lot of current or the water doesn't move at all, it can be very acidic and low in oxygen. If you've never been to or seen the Okefenokee Swamp, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the water is very dark, it's acidic and low in oxygen. This is the kind of habitat where you find fly or sunfish. Bowfin and gar also do well in these areas. So if you find a water body with a lot of bowfin, there's a good chance uh, you also have fly or sunfish. Flyer sunfish have relatively small mouths, so it's probably no surprise they feed primarily on macroinvertebrates, including insects, snails, and worms. Average size is probably 5 inches, and they max out around 11 inches.